Hello, my name is Marlene Tafoya. I'm an indigenous artist, performer, and part-time clown from Los Angeles Harbor area. As a brown female artist, I find it very necessary to have an art practice. I think that it is my responsibility for the de generations before and those who have come after. Through performative action, I make work with the spirit of colonial resistance. Let us have a look at the work in At First Sight exhibition titled Apple Pie. Here we have a collaborative performance with my grandma and aunt. I instructed them both to talk about me as if I was not there. The whole performance lasted about an hour in duration, uh, but I chose to only include parts of the video for the video itself. Eating the pie is a metaphor for my inclusion and exclusion of American culture. Their dialogue consisted of trash talking the fact that I do not know Spanish and how dumb I must feel to look how I look and not understand a word that they are saying. By the end of the performance, I was kicking my gran grandma underneath the table, hoping they would stop their dialogue and hoping that I would not regurgitate the apple pie all over my grandma's table. <clears throat> the performance ends with me being blessed by my grandma in the sign of the cross. Next, we have a site-specific performance which was held in Wilmington, California on the corner of Avalon and Anaheim. Growing up in Wilmington, I always struck, was struck by this location as it was the cornerstone for alternative evangelical teachings. Almost every time I would pass by this busy corner, there would be someone on a megaphone preaching the word of God at the top of their lungs. So I asked myself, why not say what I need to say at this corner? This was my first attempt at performing in a public space. I set up a table with over 200 tortillas and had a sign that said, throw a tortilla at me for free. The public proceeded and indeed casted all of the tortillas. I wanted to cha challenge the stereotypes and projections that have followed me throughout my life. I became a spectacle, which then ties directly to how I feel straddling different cultures and identities. In the midst of this intentional oppression, my gaze is steady, meditative, and empowered. And another empowering and disruptive moment was in my performance titled Batting Cage. I had recently saw a body of work by Larry Sultan. <clears throat> One photograph in particular was titled Batting Cage, and for a while I could not get this image out of my head. The idea of entrapment and longing for something else was so prevalent in his work and it essentially was what I was focusing on in my personal life. I dressed up in a traditional flippotical dress skirt <clears throat> and stood in a batting cage and proceeded to swing at the baseballs coming my way. Pushing boundaries in social settings is my way of decolonizing and is a means of survival. After playing with the idea of identity and challenging stereotypes, I found myself at one point <clears throat> wanting to make work that, work that had no political intention. It was more so about responding to a work that I had not understood at the time. Response to Bruce Nauman's clown torture for me became some sort of trance that I had no intention of entering. It reminded me of this notion of speaking in tongues and in a way, <clears throat> The language that I had begun to speak within this performance became dark, but still had an element of humor and hope. For what purpose exactly, I still don't know. Having no political agenda in my work <clears throat> did not last long. As a kid, I remember the melodies of Erica Badu playing while the smell of burning sage would hit my nose. At the time, I had no... At the time, I had not known why we would burn sage, but as an adult, I began to explore my indigenous identity. Here is a wood burning with the repeated inscriptions, burn sage, not oil. At the time, there had been many actions and protests against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Big corporations and investors wanted to run a pipeline through the Standing Rock Sioux territory. After many arrests, water canyons and the disruption of the land, the project was finally halted this year, pending review. I was later invited by Honor Fraser Gallery to perform during Pacific Standard Time, LA LA. 
Aim High, Aim Low is an interactive installation inspired by the hybridization of Aztec, Catholic, and ind indigenous rituals. I filled a piñata with sage bundles that myself and my friends have gathered in tradition, offering tobacco in exchange to Mother Earth. The breaking of the sage-filled piñata is an act of protest against the colonization and cultural erasure of my ancestors. Here is the serape that was hung adjacent to the area of the performance. So the ideas of protest and decolonization continue to become heavily prevalent in my work. I began to also understand that I could not talk about decolonization without talking about the, brown, the many brown and black bodies that have been misused over time. I decided to participate in an art action called Jail Bed Drop, where over 50 jail beds were placed throughout the LA County. Justice LA Coalition <laughs> invited artists to participate in, in the drops in hopes of stopping the expansion of jail and reverting those funds to community efforts. Myself and our former collective Mezclado reconstructed the jail bed in place of comfort with curtains and a box of flowers, a San Marcos blanket, roofing tile, grass, and burning sage. We chose to introduce comfort into this piece as a sign of solidarity with our family members, friends, community members, and those directly affected by the incar incarceration and state violence. Our piece was dropped at Plaza Mexico in Linwood, California. Lastly is a collaboration between my goddaughter, Serene Tafoya, and myself. In this presentation, we illustrated an act of slavery by placing roof tiles over our th thighs to demonstrate the physicality of creating a mission roof tile. It is said that this method of creating roof tiles is a myth, but as we should know it, the physical bodies of women and children were and are still used in every aspect of colonization. <laughs>